Page 10, Three Hands on a Piano. This is an arrangement of a piece where you can do it, what's known as a duet. That's where two people are playing or singing a piece at the same time with each other. They may play or sing the same notes and they may be doing different notes. So the top staff is the teacher's part. That's where the teacher would play all those notes. The bottom two staffs with the curly brace, that's the grand staff. That's what you would play. And the two of you could play on, on the same keyboard is fine and have fun with it. Uh, there's a few things here I'd like to point out though. So I'm going to go through the system I use for learning a piece of music and I'll talk about them. I look it over, I see it's two pages long. Treble and bass clef signs, and I'm talking about the two clef signs, the two staffs on the bottom, the ones that are connected with a curly brace. That's the grand staff. You got to remember that when you have more, more staffs like this, you got to figure out which staffs you're looking at, and you get, you get in the habit of which staffs do I see now because it can be, be confusing. It's the bottom two staffs in each group. See, there's three staffs connected. And we're talking about the bottom two stabs of those. So we have treble and bass clef signs, one flat in the key signature, we're in the key of F major. Go ahead and be doing the scale for F major and also do the scale for D minor because it has one flat in it. Three, four time signature. Let's take it one hand at a time, make sure we understand what the hands are doing. The right hand, you just have a chord, you're starting with an F chord here. One, two, three, one, two, third major. If you're not sure what it is, then spell out the chords, what we call it. You just take it one note at a time and figure it out, bottom to top. Start at the bottom and go up. Music is built from the bottom up, so we get in the habit of that. So in the third major, it's an F natural, a G sharp, which is here, and then a D that's here. So I'm going from here to here. You eventually feel a, get a feeling for that, so you don't even have to look at the keyboard for it. So that's a, Back to the F. Second line, second measure, then the thumb comes down to here, C chord. And the last two measures of the second line, well again, it's an E, a B flat, there's a B, remember the flat's in the key signature, it's a B flat and a C. Here you got a bunch of those. Let's go to page 11. In the first line you got these, one, two, three, one, two, now the last measure you got to come up here. You got one beat rest to come up here. Just it's a it's the F chord. We're just putting the F on top here. That's all. It's like first inversion. Have we had inversions? Yeah, I don't know. But that, it's still an F chord. You're up here. Second line, second measure. It's a B flat, a D, and an F. You can finger it this way. If your hands don't fit up here very well, then finger it with second finger. So you go here and you stay out here. Last two measures, it's an F, a B flat, and a D flat. And you can do a 1 3 5 or a 1 2 4, however, just finger it. Left hand, well, the left hand gets the melody. And starting here, so 1, 2, 3, and the thumb comes up to in the second finger. Just reach down again to. Time for two measures and then just lift up and come down. Just lift up here. Now, last line on page 10. First measure is here, and second measure they have a two or four. That means you got a choice. Which finger do you want? I could use second finger or I could scratch up and use four. You could also do three if you want to. The idea is we want to connect these notes right now. And I want to connect the G to the C, the next note, the next measure here. So if a two, if you can reach up there, fine. Two's fine. Then claps. If not, then use some other finger. A three or a four. Because a four puts you in position. You choose. Just pick a finger and whatever you choose, stick with that. Don't keep changing them. Page 11, it's a two. And again, you have two or a four, we're getting ready for the next measure. So if you can, if you can reach that F, it's an F. 
With two, that's fine. Otherwise, you might want a three or a four, either one. And you need to know that note, that F. That's two le it's above two ledger lines. One ledger line, remember, is middle C. Two ledger lines would be an E, because it's every other note. And that's right above it. You can always figure it out like that. But it's really better, in my opinion, if it's within three ledger lines. Just memorize the note. Just know it's an F. Next line, it's an E flat. Now I'm with the thumb underneath. That's fine. If you're doing the scales, that's easy. And then going on, it's a D flat. Then reach down, little finger. And they're saying five here, the, the last four measures at the bottom. It's here. They're saying this. I don't, uh, uh, no, let's not do that. Blech. I don't want to go from here to here. I want to connect this. So I want thumb on that F so I can reach down. And in order to get thumb on that F, I gotta change this other fingering. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a four and then a thumb. Can you do a four and a thumb without twisting around it? Just relax. The thumb will do amazing things if you'll just relax. Just reach. But I want thumb on that so I can just reach down for the last measure. Then I try and put the heads together, and again I'm connecting everything if I can. One, two, three. In here. Anyway, you put the hands together. I already did. Then go back over it slowly and carefully and get rid of any hesitation so it is steady beat throughout. Especially if you're going to play with other people. You can't be hesitating, you mess them up. And once I do that, I'll think about the articulation, the expression. This is very connected. Now you see the note in between the staves at the beginning, LH Marcato emphasized. That has more to do with the dynamics. I'll talk about that a little later and tell you why I disagree with that. <laughs> right now, as far as the articulation goes, we're going to slur this melody. See the curve line? Lift up. Just a little, like taking a breath in between each of the phrases. The right hand is plant. Just yeah. now at the bottom of page eleven, last line you're here. Lift up. And I, I suggest pretend that curved line goes all the way to the end. They, they didn't because you, they want you to go from here to here, and you have to lift up for that. But I want it connected. So. Here and connect it so you can make the curve line go all the way to the end. Then I think about the dynamics, and this is where this note they have in here that I disagree with. A marcato is a strong accent. I don't want to accent anything. It's very, very pretty, very calm and flowing. What they mean is what we call bring out the melody. It's just a phrase. Bring out the melody. You'll hear it. Bring out the melody. It simply means. The melody is what it's all about. The melody rules. The melody is what we're here to listen to. That's what we want to hear. So you, the melody you bring out, play it a little louder, and everything else is in the background. That's all it means. Bring out the melodies. Just play the left hand louder than the right. These soft. Just playing the left hand louder than the left or right, which hand, whichever. But that's all we want. If you have a problem with that, you know, playing one hand heavier than the other hand light. Again, when you're doing the scales, practice playing the scales one hand heavy and one hand light, and take turns as to which hand is heavy on that. That way, when you get these in the pieces, you just do it because you've already practiced the idea. They give you an MF. You see between the staves, MF. Mezzo forte is sort of loud, and that applies to the melody. It's, it's up close to the top staff. You think it applies to that? No. It belongs in the middle, but this other stuff is in the way. It applies to the melody wherever it is. So here it's moderately loud. 
whatever you think moderately loud. Not loud, just sort of loud. And this is soft. This is sort of heavy. This is light. And as near as I could tell, that's the only dynamic they give you. Well, boring. I would not play this whole thing at right at medium loud. Once you're comfortable with the mechanics, the notes and the rhythms and all that, then you start feeling the music, you get into the music. And if you feel getting a little louder and softer in places, go for it. Like the phrases, you can come off at the end of the phrase, get a little softer. But down. Now, go back. Go. See, I'm getting a little softer at the end of a phrase. That's one idea, you don't have to. The idea is don't always just play it at one level. Feel it. Remember the natural accents. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. I'm exaggerating them so you can hear them better, but feel these natural accents all the way through. As far as the speed goes, Temple de Balse is a, a waltz tempo, but problem is you have slow waltzes and fast waltzes and in-between waltzes. Picture people dancing, one, two, three, one, two, about that speed is fine. Then they've added pedal. Well, I think it sounds fine without pedal, but okay, you want to add pedal, we can add pedal. We want to be careful with it because we don't want to smear it up. At the beginning, you're going to push the notes down first and then pedal, and they want you to pedal the first two measures, like this. Then you change it, and then up, up. I think that sounds terrible, in my opinion. Ugh. I mean, it's nice to have the contrast in there, but we need to be intelligent with the contrast we're using. In my opinion, I would pretty much pedal all of this. Just change it with the harmony and change it probably about every measure or so, because we don't want, we don't want all of that. Ugh. So I think I'm probably going to change it on every measure. Just, it's overlapping pedals, so the hands go down first and then the pedal here. Change it after I play the note. But at the end of a phrase, if I want to hear the phrase, I've got to lift the pedal up with the left hand, like taking a breath so I can hear the phrase. put in a decrescendo at the end. If nobody is dancing to this, you could probably do a little, little retard there. If people are dancing to it, don't retard. You mess them up. Keep the beat going to the end. And if you're playing with another person, you have to coordinate your retard. So you're both retarding the same. You may have to work on that and practice it with each other. But you don't have to retard. You can play at the same speed throughout. It's fine. Now at the end, I forgot to mention on the pedal. Change the pedal on the last measure, but pedal that half note. Go ahead and pedal it. So the last four measures is here. Change, change, change. So we want to get rid of that. I want to, we're dying away. I want to get rid of some of it. There. And then lift everything up at the same time on beat three. Let's play this together very slowly. Now, this is after you can play it. No hesitations. We're not performing it, we're just playing it. So I'm gonna play everything about the same. I'm gonna pedal it like I suggested, and I'll give us three counts. Let's just try it. I'm not doing louds and softs. There aren't really any, but okay. I, did I say that already? I can't remember what I've done. Never mind, just play what I'd play. One, ready, go.
like to do is I'd like to play the teacher's part. And then you play what you're playing. So I'll give us three counts. Uh, the teacher's part has a rest on beat one. It doesn't commit on the end, until the end of one. So I'm going to play a note on beat one just so, so we play together at the beginning. And then I'm going to do the teacher's part throughout. And you can do your part. We're going to speed it up just a little bit, but not much. I'll give us three counts. Did I say that? I can't remember. I don't know. One, ready, go. Mm -hmm. 